So Gabby, how important is range as a singer? Um, I don't say that it's not important. It is very important. Um, it's something that I think I was after over the years. Did you increase range? Or? I absolutely did. I did. Okay. Uh, by a lot. How many? How, what is my range? I don't even know. You actually have almost know? four octaves right now, so yeah. That was post. That was a question that was posted. That, we'll talk about this later. But, so, good. but <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, but so, but is range everything? Like, how important is range as a singer? Like, a couple notes is great. Like, if you can sing in a certain thing, your favorite songs. But for you, what does that look like to you? You know, for me, it's more important. Okay, you want to hit the high note, good. But the tone and the color with which you hit. I would rather have a smaller range than having two octaves that sound good and then two octaves that are so unpleasant and annoying to the listeners that... You have four, by the way. Yeah, but I'm saying like if you would have two that are pleasant and then two octaves that are not pleasant, right. I, would rather, I would rather have a lower uh, range but having great color and tone throughout the whole range. Why? Why? Because uh, I know myself, like listening to music, not every high note that maybe sometimes singer hit sounds really pleasant to my ears. What about There's tell, no what about emotion, the story, you know, uh, emotions, of course, yeah. all of that. Like you, you can color and tone. In in my humble opinion, is is more. It's above the range. I would rather hit a lower lower note that will give you response because it has the right emotion, the right tone, the right color, rather than impressive. F4, whatever that is, that um, will just pierce your ears and you're like, oh my gosh. You have F5s that are off the chain, but... Right, right. Um, well, that's, that's, that, that's at least like the way I look at it. Like, range is not everything. Right. If anyone was just like, oh, I just want to have the range, I wish it would be just simple like that. But, okay. um, um, but American Idol would tell us different. They would say, you know, it's all but... Like crazy notes, and then everyone claps, they get the gig. What about telling the story? Very important, obviously. Um, what songs have we done? We're, this is not pre rehearsed, by the way. This question. Can you tell? Um, um, <laughs> what songs have we done that maybe I busted your chops or you felt uncomfortable, like telling a story of a song? It wasn't about the range, it was about communicating. Um, you did it recently. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> yes. It's I. Li I mean that song. If you guys ever, if you guys want to hear the, the rendition that we, we'll, we'll that, put that in the description. Go ahead. Description, but that was um, obviously there's the high notes, untouchable. It's probably one of the hardest songs to sing ever written for for Broadway, for, especially for Broadway, know. especially and. Um, but what, I, I, what, what made it so difficult? Like, what made it so tough? Well, you have to live that story. Really. You have to be in character, yeah. living like an actor in the story. You have to tune in into, and it, it, again, that's how I was sometimes like, you know, I don't think you might attempt to sing that song un until you're a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> and you that, live, that, that, and you literally live through life. Like the blues. In my 20s, yeah. if I would, like, I would not be through life trauma, suffering, loss. Wait, these guys, yep, trauma, oh, suffering, loss. Everyone, everyone do you okay, know? Hold on. Am I the only one? Okay, so like, <laughs> I thought you were just like floating on a cloud. Oh sure, you know? all the time, oh my yeah. God. So my life is amazing. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, it is, uh, there's certain songs you don't really get to sing until you understand really emotionally what the lyrics is about. You know, I remember a John Coltrane song I heard in my 20s and I thought, this is like a cacophony, deliberate choice of, word, choice of words there, of notes. And then later in life I went, this is genius. Like I didn't understand how this all worked together with John Coltrane. Um, you do have to have like a certain uh, level of age experience to really truly experience Absolutely. That. Okay. And then just like, you know, that, that's the thing that we're artists. We, we, our life really translates into our expression so much. Okay, I was gonna make this longer, but we're gonna, we're going there, so I'm going there. Um, we're chopping, we're chopping. No, I'm not gonna chop it. 
<laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm serious. So you mentioned Jesus Christ Superstar. So when I first heard that as a Christian, and I am a Christian, I thought, anathemy, what a curse, like how could they do this, whatever. Um, later, my own personal experience, everyone has a different journey, it's fine. Um, how did you communicate that message? Uh, by the way, I, don't, I know you're not a proclaimed born again Christian, so we're good with that. So how did you communicate that message of Jesus' anguish and lament to go to the cross? How do you do that? Like, how do you internalize that? How do you express um, well, that? Well, I don't know, not many people know, but I, I had a Lyme disease for five years. Okay. So it's a, it's a genetic disorder. Lyme disease. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had it for five years. Yeah. So it's a... Recently. Yeah. I mean, for, for people that, that go through it or that have it, I think they can understand it's, it's incredibly painful disease. And debilitating. Very debilitating, debilitating, very painful disease that um, if, you, if you look at the high rate of suicide, it's very high. Um, it's because it's very hard to live and function with that kind of disease. So I would I would dare to say that I'm winning the battle, um, but just a few years ago, I was kind of on the edge of, of having that dialogue of like, uh, I'm not a Christian, but I, I, I have a relationship with God, I believe in God, I believe in higher powers, absolutely. And there were moments when I was just asking to, to have that burden taken away from me. I, I, I didn't want to have that responsibility to keep continuing and moving. And, um, and I was questioning everything about life, about afterlife, about God. I remember I spent few uh, months watching near-death experiences just because I wanted to be very um, uh, comforted by the fact that if I die tomorrow, which with like, disease like that, you just, you never know. Um, what would be your recommendation then to people out there going through that? Uh, by the way, I should have made this like a whole other thing, but we're here, so. Um, again, I think this is something that I mentioned. Um, first of all, you have to keep your faith. You, you have to keep believing that it, at some point it will get better. Um, which it took me four years, almost five years. That's why I kind of was not around for Fill a little bit. Yeah, yeah I was like, where is she? What's she doing? I, I she, was, that, she was in trauma. I really didn't trauma. want anyone to know. Um, but it, it happened. It happens to. It can happen to anyone. Is the truth. Um, I don't take health for granted anymore. And just saying or before is like a kind of a new gift yeah. for me personally. Being on the stage doing anything, I was just oh. like so excited this year to get on the tour. Um, TSO. Yeah, TSO, Rock Meets Classic, all of that. Um, and personally for me, it was keep looking for the cure, keep looking. There's one thing sooner or later will work. Um, if you guys have any questions, Regarding Lyme disease, you can um, DM me on Instagram or something. I can I can also tell I'll, you how I'll, I cured. I'll post, I'll post some stuff here. Yeah, that you how guys... we how how I healed and what helped me to get better um, in my personal journey. Because um, I want to help as many people as I can. Because I know how to. So wait, so we're clear on this. So you like when it, for me, uh, just as a humble vocal coach, whatever that means. One of the greatest female or male female rock vocalists in the world, and uh -huh. you were stunted by. Lyme's disease, and then you broke through this, and you spent five more than five years, seven years almost, but five years working on your craft, and you've come back. By the way, I know this is a long video for you guys that hear it through the duration of this. Um, we just recorded this this week, this week, this week, some stuff. Um, this is a testimony to her and her diligence and her you know, really doing the work and, and making this work. And you guys can be the judge of, it. did she get worse? Did she get better? You know, what? how, how did this play out? So um, anyway, so we're gonna move on. I wanna address that question because we have more. Ken Chaplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Get really good Chiba, Gabby Gunn. <laughs> we're, we're going there. Change it. <laughs> you guys Americans can't pronounce it, I'm sorry. Or spell it. I can't even spell it. G U N. Gabriella Gunn. Gabby Gunn. From now on. Gabby Gunn. Anyway, until next time, <laughs> peace. And I'll explain.